Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the breaking Bitcoin market update. We've got a lot to talk about today. We've got some very exciting news that just came out today. I do not believe it is fully circulated throughout the cryptocurrency community. And this could have a profound impact and be the catalyst that fuels the next leg of the bull run. It can also just turn out to be maybe not all that impactful. But we're going to find out today, guys, in today's episode of the Breaking Bitcoin market update. Let's roll. All right. Thank you, everybody. Welcome back. Today is May 24th. 2023. It is Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. We are halfway through the week, hump day, as they say, and the crypto markets are down. But uh, we are trying to be elevated and positive on this channel at this particular point in time. And certainly there are other many things that are going up. But in general, the cryptocurrency market certainly is slumping today as Bitcoin is appearing to break back down through support through the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern. And just again, just again at horizontal support at the 26.5 area, currently trading at 26 to 28. Now, we've been talking about this for quite a while. And before we get into the news from the day, let's just go over the technicals, of course. We've been talking about this for several weeks now, this very clear head and shoulders pattern forming with a measured move down to 23.4K. Bitcoin's price consolidated at support here briefly, uh, and we're now getting the most significant movement that we've seen out of this range so far, or out of this kind of consolidation period. Yesterday, when prices were pushing to the upside, we did talk about if price does close above this level of 27.5, that longing the breakout for a liquidity grab made a lot of sense. Uh, the reason why is because you always want to trade on the side of momentum in cryptocurrency, Everybody wants to kind of fantasize or talk about or glorify the idea of, you know, catching the reversal or catching the top, which is also a reversal, of course. But in my experience, that is typically foolhardy. <clears throat> I can just tell from my own personal experience, as well as the members in the group and many people that I've communicated with in cryptocurrency trading, reversal trading is very difficult. And I personally have an extremely low hit rate when I do reversal trading. However, it's un it's ironically the first type of trade that I tend to gravitate towards mentally when I look at a chart. So I have to put lots of systems in place to prevent me from taking those emotional trades, those trades that make sense to me intuitively uh, or that seem to be correct when I'm looking at the chart, but in reality are not the trades that I want to be taking. So... Uh, because they don't work out. And when I just simply follow my strategy, I make money. Huh, who would have thought? Okay, so from a price perspective pattern, actually, hold on just a second. I want to get to my... Yeah, from a price perspective pattern, certainly looking bearish today and fulfilling kind of the head and shoulders. <clears throat> the head and shoulders prophecy. Okay, so... Let's get the actual show rolling here, guys. We are proud to host the fastest growing online community of traders and cryptocurrency enthusiasts. To so stay up to date, make sure you join us in the Discord server at discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Link down in the description below, as well as links to anything you could possibly imagine. So what is the headline of the day? What is the big news that is potentially going to propel price along uh, <clears throat> to the next leg of the bull run? What is the catalyst for the next bull run? Well, this morning, uh, CZ, uh, CZ of Binance fame, tweeted this out, and he said, CCTV, this is the Chinese central television, just broadcasted crypto. It's a big deal. The Chinese-speaking communities are buzzing. Historically, coverages like these led to bull runs. Not saying past predicts the future and not financial advice. And then, of course, there is the link to the uh, CCTV broadcast. And I'm not sure if this is going to pull up exactly what I want, but we'll give it a shot for the lulls. And I feel like my IP address has just been scraped. And yeah, not getting anything. But anyways, 
Uh, I was listening to Rug Radio this morning, and they brought someone on who was a who was able to speak Mandarin, and they were able to translate that. And essentially, what they were saying is reinforcing. Then I did some digging, and I was able to find a couple of news articles. <clears throat> this was actually posted yesterday. Hong Kong retail investors to start trading major cryptocurrency tokens starting June 1st. All right, so just right around the corner as a new virtual assets regime kicks off. So. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Hong Kong is certainly attempting to position itself as a very crypto friendly uh, country. And uh, I think this is really good as we're seeing, you know, this is exactly what we've talked about many, many times about the foolhardiness of the United States ham fisted and draconian approach, not really draconian, but just their certainly ham fisted approach. Uh, to cryptocurrency regulation, as we've seen with Elizabeth Warren and with the SEC, just a lot of fumbling around and not a lot of clear um, uh, clearance. And it's uncertainty that spooks the market, right? Uncertainty is what spooks the market. Uncertainty is the most terrible thing uh, that most people will deal with psychologically because, and you know, you could even look at things that are really terrible. For example, if you know that you're going to get beat up, that's not as bad as continually walking around in fear that you may or may not be getting beat up, right? Um, <clears throat> once you know that something is an assurance, there's a level of acceptance, right? You can notice this in all aspects of life, not just the more morbid, as I was kind of pointing out there. But when, you know, for example, when you're taking a trade, if when the trade is going against you and you accept in your head that your stop loss is going to get hit, you tend, to, you tend to feel this sense of relief and you stop emotionally worrying about the trade because it's going to do, the market's going to do what the market's going to do. And all you can do is position yourself with your strategy to take advantage of opportunities as they arise. Okay. Take advantage of opportunities as they arise. So the SFC, which is the Hong Kong uh, counterpart to the Securities and Exchange Commission's has finalized rules that will allow licensed exchanges to sell cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ether, to retail investors in Hong Kong. All right. Uh, the new regulation comes amid the city's drive to become a global Web3 hub, despite other governments growing apprehensions for virtual assets. So this is not fake news. This is reality. Uh, this was obviously posted in the South China Morning Post and then CZ posting this. This was on CCTV, confirmed by individuals now. So th this is pretty huge, right? You know, we've talked about this many times before in previous cycles. You know, when is China buying? China floodgates are open. Then China bans crypto mining and the market moves down and then China approves it and the markets pop. What we know for certain is that the Asian markets are not to be underestimated with their effect on cryptocurrency. And having the floodgates opened up like this and having a pro cryptocurrency uh, section of the world here, uh, when we see many other governments and, uh, and and nations attempting to again be a little bit more ham fisted, as I was saying earlier, uh, I think is just in incredibly powerful. Now we're not obviously seeing an immediate reaction to this. In fact, we're kind of seeing a you know buy the rumor, sell the news event uh, from this particular situation. But these things take a while to take effect. So what we now have is we now have a bit of fundamental backing to our technical thesis that Bitcoin has bottomed, that the cryptocurrency markets have bottomed. And although, as we've pointed out with our previous analysis, we are predicting a short slump in the near term due to lagging on-chain metrics and due to just pure technicals, the idea that Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets in general have put in a significant uh, macro bottom uh, and that in the long run, uh, we're generally up only from here certainly as time goes on, just seems more and more realized in my mind. I continue to see more evidence and more proof, and this is just certainly one of those things. So China is coming, ladies and gentlemen. China is coming. They have just gotten the permission, and we'll see what effect this has on uh, on the markets. <clears throat> yesterday, uh, let's see, what did we talk about yesterday? Uh, we generally talked about technicals yesterday. And let me, I did want to give a shout out, of course. Let me just pull this up real quick. Uh, I wanted to give a big shout out to White on Rice uh, and uh, 
Greg S and Beast Mode Focus uh, for commenting on yesterday's YouTube video. Uh, White on Rice saying, thanks for all you do. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for stopping by and watching the streams. Uh, Greg S uh, saying, in any of your wallets, if you hold Ethereum, you will hold the same amount of tokens in PLS on the Pulse chain. That is correct. Thank you for letting us know that, Greg S. And thank you for your support, my friend. And... Uh, and Beast Mode Focus says, buy and burn is very different than burn, which is very interesting. And, you know, I want to thank Bflow uh, and the broader Pulse Chain community, too, uh, in general, for educating me a little bit more on the buy and burn function for PulseX. So uh, on the Pulse Chain blockchain, in the Pulse Chain ecosystem with the PulseX decentralized exchange, anytime a trade is made, a certain percentage of that trading fee goes to purchase PulseX. All right. So there's kind of a, a pump a mental uh, uh, function built into the PulseX exchange and the PulseX token. And again, full disclosure, I am holding both Pulse and PulseX. So let's uh, let's let's take a gandy. Let's let's switch, switch back over to the big charts here, and we'll see what we got going on. Okay, uh, let's do our trade of the day breakdown, and we'll actually go to the big chart for that. So trade of the breakdown is going to be, I'll actually bring this over here real quick, uh, is going to be render token on KuCoin. All right. Uh, I've talked about this trade for several days, and I wanted to point out again how this was not a good trade, even though I made money on it. Okay. So I want to walk you through the saga of this wild ride. So uh, RNDR, I've been, I had been trading RNDR uh, for, for, basically <clears throat> two weeks uh, and I was having very good success trading RNDR and then I saw the price chart do do this right I saw prices uh really you know consolidate here and then push up above resistance and here I broke two of my rules the first rule is uh don't fade breakouts that are high volume and low wick notice how this candle is breaking out above this range but there is very little wick, almost no wick, and high volume, all right? That is not a candle to fade, all right? And I went short like a dum-dum, all right? I don't always make the best decisions. Again, what did I say earlier? When I instinctually look at a chart uh, and I see a movement like that, my instincts tell me to take to go in the opposite direction, to fade, right? And I think this comes from my days in Forex markets, trading Forex, where I used TD methods, uh, TD sequential, TD clop, TD clopfin. Um, and other Tom DeMarc indicators and strategies uh, to good effect. And I would fade. Uh, that was my primary strategy was to fade breakouts. Uh, and, you know, even years later, it's kind of hard to get that that conditioning out of my head uh, because with cryptocurrency, it's extremely different. You want to trade in the direction of momentum because the breakouts are so powerful. So all you need to do is catch a few good breakouts and, and you're doing good uh, as long as you're managing your risk appropriately and position sizing appropriately, uh, which is really two sides of the same coin. So then this happened. All right. So I went, uh, the thing is I didn't actually set my stop loss and take profit for this trade. Right. I went short. I was in the middle of doing something. I wasn't actually sitting down to do my dedicated trading time. Uh, and we see price absolutely explode. Right. It ran up once I entered, right. Once I entered price ran up 13, another 13%, uh, should have stopped me out. And that should have been the end of the story, but that's not the end of the story. So I held that position all the way down, uh, to my take profit level. Okay. Uh, to my take profit level took profit. Okay. Um, and then, uh, just uh, again here, uh, took this trade as price came back down to my entry point as we kind of went back above consolidated and just proved that we weren't going to push higher. I took this short and closed it out earlier today. So RNDR has been a wild trade. Uh, and I want to just point out again, this first part of the trade, not good. Uh, I shouldn't have taken this trade. I didn't manage. Uh, I didn't manage my risk by setting a stop loss when I should have. I thought I did. I just walked away from the computer before I did because I was distracted. So that is a key lesson here. Trading when you when you're sitting down to trade, 
trade. You need to be there. You need to be present. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on everything. Focus on your hands on the keyboard. Focus on your hands on the mouse. Focus on your breath, whatever that hippy dippy stuff you want to do. But be present in the moment and be aware of what you're doing. Be mindful of your actions and be mindful of the consequences and repercussions of your actions. This is your financial freedom that you are gambling every time you press the buy or sell button. Every time you press the buy or sell button, there is going to be an impact to your net worth. All right, to your trading account, which is an extension of your net worth. You need to be on point. You cannot be making silly, simple mistakes consistently or you're going to get bad results. And the fact that I was able to turn this around into a win, does I'm not trying to glorify that. This is not a good trade, in my opinion. This is a bad trade. I should, you know, I, I instead of being punished for bad activity, for bad behavior, like you would punish a child for doing something wrong so that they learn, uh, I was rewarded, right? So now there's almost this, subconscious incentive to continue to repeat this action, uh, but it's not going to be long-term profitable. I know I've done my tests. Uh, anyways, so after we have this breakout, uh, we, we, we pump very strongly and then we return to support. So this is kind of a BPR, but on a very big scale. Um, so break, uh, so we break resistance, we pull back and we retest the level of the breakout. All right. Uh, and then we push up again. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make significant strides or gains here. Uh, Minx actually gave a little bit of an early sell signal here, and we did push up another 6%, uh, but Minx was accurately calling the top. And the next cross under was the top of the market right here uh, at uh, uh, at 12 o'clock on Tuesday uh, is, is when it called the, the peak uh, and gave the, the short signal. Uh, price then, uh, this is when I, excuse me, I actually took the short. I entered on momentum right here. So just as I'm saying, we see that price is moving up. We consolidate, we fail, price begins moving down. I see that there is a lot of momentum. What do I mean by momentum? I mean lots of big candles moving in one direction with small wicks, very little wicks. Very little wicks and big candle body size is your indication of momentum. You can obviously use indicators, okay? Uh, as you can see here, uh, at this moment in time, this was just a full signal from my Pathways to Profit trading strategy. So we have prices moving down. Uh, we have a big red candle. Uh, and then on this candle, we actually have Minx as a centered oscillator signal cross below zero. Zero is the middle line here on Minx, the technical indicator that's available to all of our premium members. It crosses below zero. That happens simultaneously with Wada Atar Explosion, which is a free indicator you can all go use right now. Uh, not only showing negative, uh, out, uh, excuse me, what do we call it actually? Uh, negative Delta, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, negative delta uh, and with a rising explosion level. The rising explosion level is your indication that volatility is expanding, and that is one of your triggers to enter. And then, of course, the uh, the the red deltas, the red bars, oh, do have to be above the explosion level, which is your your excuse your your dead zone filter. So this is to prevent you from taking low volatility or low momentum trades, uh, and it's just one of our many filters to help protect us against losing trades. At the same time, this is our primary initiator. This is our initiator signal price. Uh, Minx crossing back down below zero, and boom, and then again, nice exit signal, nice clean exit signal right here. But I actually hit my take profit target, so uh, we're all good. So we can go ahead and. Uh, not delete because I do like to to save evidence of my trades, but we will just backpedal this. Uh, and now we're going to leave a comment. Um, leave a call out right here. Um, And we'll text wrap that. All right. So again, this is just an important part of the trading process is documenting, 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 and then reviewing, 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 reviewing exactly what you did right. Uh, but more importantly, reviewing what you did wrong. Okay. Magnus Carlson, former world chess champion said many, many times that he, every time he had a losing game, he would go back and critically analyze every single move he made to determine what mistake he made so that he wouldn't repeat it in the future. And this is the path to success. Everybody likes to be congratulated and backslapped for doing great, but it's the self-aware, self-critical analysis of what you've done wrong 
that will actually push you to new heights, that will actually force you along on the path of enlightenment, that will force you along on, on the self-improvement path that you're on. You have to look at what you did wrong and you have to develop systems and processes to not repeat that mistake again. Okay, it's as simple as that. Document what you do, review your documents, make a plan, okay? Document, review, strategize. Document, review, strategize. Okay, so that's the trade of the day. Uh, we went over the entry, the execution, and um, <clears throat> now let's do our market summary. We'll of course start with Bitcoin. Starting out on the daily time frame, uh, we've kind of already gone over this, uh, but the main things to pay attention to here is just, of course, Bitcoin uh, now breaking down below previously established support uh, at about 26.5, also breaking down below the neckline of this head and shoulders pattern. Uh, excuse me, I need to make an adjustment here. Uh, Minx has already crossed below the zero line. In fact, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Pathways to Profit strategy uh, gave a short signal on this candle right here. Uh, we are, we were, of course, above the baseline, but besides that, everything else has been fulfilled. So again, entry here up about 5% on that particular position right there. So shout outs to everybody who took that particular trade, uh, who saw that in the charts. Uh, we don't have an expansion of volatility right now. We do have, of course, Parallax and Minx in negative territory. And Minx actually looking to give a continuation signal on this cross down right here. Uh, so there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking shorts right here if you're not using a baseline filter or if you're using a different baseline for me. Uh, my baseline filter is preventing me from taking shorts at this moment, so I am long biased. Uh, so... Uh, so daily time frame, we are just simply looking for this dip down to the daily baseline uh, and the kind of the completion of this head and shoulders pattern down to about 23.4. So again, brief dips below the baseline is okay. Uh, as you can see, the previous significant dip buying opportunity did uh, poke its head below the daily baseline and even formed a hammer candle before resurging. Now, I always wait for these candles, uh, these candles before I enter back in, but... Uh, I digress. So in summary, we have some bearish consolidation. Uh, we do see a potential breakdown of our current range right now. And we do have a measured movement and price target of 23.4. Now, again, I'm not personally shorting this uh, due to my strategy, um, but I definitely see the validity of taking such signal. In fact, besides the baseline, everything in my strategy told me to short here. Okay. Told me to short here and I'd be at 5%. So <clears throat> four hour time frame. Four-hour time frame has had you short for a while, okay? Uh, we crossed the uh, four-hour baseline back here on the 7th of May. And actually, on that very breakdown candle, we got the short signal. Uh, so we got the short signal, and we didn't get an exit signal until... Uh, well, you could have either uh, exited due to price being... Uh, excuse me, Minx being in oversold territory. Uh, you could also use your discretion. You can see a hammer candle when price is on oversold territory. That's a very good exit signal. Um, but here's the official one. Here's the simple to cross over in oversold territory. That is your exit signal. And that's a beautiful trade. That's the, Even if you, you exit here, that's 5.75% and 6.79% if you exited there. So great, uh, great four-hour trade. Uh, then we've got a bunch of like low volatility, low momentum. So really nothing happening here. Um, uh, you know, just establishing support and kind of range trading. Uh, you notice how how the 200 Donchian on the four hour time frame just absolutely acting as um, uh, as a ceiling for price. We're not actually quite getting there. Let's see if our EMAs. Yeah, 55 EMA was doing pretty good here. Uh, the 55 EMA tends to do very very well uh, for being a magnet for price. That's it's one of my favorites, right? The Donchian is really good for bifurcating or dissecting the market into two parts, bullish or bearish. Uh, but the 55 EMA is extremely good, and I've used it as my baseline uh, many 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 times. So uh, 55 EMA good. We also of course had the uh, kind of the the. The, uh, the EMA Donchian cross under right here. And although we kind of wobble back and forth once here, uh, we've we've resolutely stayed underneath that. So just more confirmation of the, of the bearish momentum. All right. Um, let's see. What else do we got here? Yeah. So yeah, just beautiful short signal uh, there that we pointed out. 
um, and really, really nothing, really nothing else until now. Uh, so the four hour did give you uh, Wada Atar was signaling for a short here. Uh, Parallax one bar earlier. Um, Minx uh, is just now signaling for that short. Minx is just now signaling for that short on the four hour time frame. Uh, and let's look at what our metrics are for this four hour short. Uh, stop loss or invalidation at 26,740 uh, and targets from 26,053 to 25,503. Okay. Uh, by the way, all these tools are available to all of our premium members. And if you guys ever need help or uh, assistance with them, just make sure to ask in our private Discord. I'm more than willing to help anybody out with these. Um, yeah, so Parallax is a bit in the oversold territory. I'm not too happy about that. Um, but I kind of got to go with the daily on this one. Yeah, the four hours relatively convincing this is this is generally bearish you don't want to generally want to short support um uh, but that's a pretty nasty daily breakdown let's go to the hourly and see how the hourly has been handling this uh, a little bit more volatile on the hourly let's go ahead and get rid of our take profit and stop loss indications and yeah we've just kind of been bouncing back and forth uh, along the baseline but probably with some opportunities to trade here yeah so trading yeah it told us to go long here <clears throat> we had a 1.67 percent trade on the hourly uh, let's see here. Did it tell us? Yeah, it told us to get short here on the hourly. We had a 1.65% profit opportunity with an exit here. Um, not much, not much follow through on this hourly trade. So break even or loss. Uh, that's candle size violation. So that's not a short trade. Uh, and then we have consolidation here and we don't really get a signal until here. Yeah, we do get a long signal here. On the hourly and we could run that up for 1.18 percent uh short signal here uh which we're able to run down for 1.31 percent and then another long signal here which we're able to run up for another 1.86 percent. so you guys can could just quickly see right just on the hourly with the pathways to profit trading strategy just following the momentum you're able to capture almost all the moves right you're able to capture all the moves uh, you didn't have to worry about, oh, is this the bottom or is this the bottom or is this the top? You don't have to be worried about fading the market. You just trade in the direction of momentum. That's all you have to do. And on the hourly, this is really beautiful. On the hourly, break down below the daily baseline, across below. We're already, we already got the short signal from Minx and Wada Atar is confirming. Everything's confirming here uh, to exit here or to, to enter here and already up 2.18% on this, uh, this one hour short for, uh, uh, for, for Bitcoin. So beautiful trades here, guys. Really liking it. Uh, really crushing the hourly. Um, let's see here. Okay. So let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions on Bitcoin. Uh, do you see something that I'm not? Overall, uh, my PTP strategy has been doing very, very well uh, on the four hour and the hourly so far. And yeah, everything's good. Uh, let's take, let's now move our attention to Ethereum. Starting off on the daily time frame, of course. Uh, Ethereum, very similar to Bitcoin here, resolutely remaining above the daily baseline uh, and, and a nasty move down. So very much, very much a similar head and shoulders pattern here on, on Ethereum. Let's see if we can't draw this out. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't like that at all. Nope. This one's not as clean as Bitcoin's. But we do have the breakdown of the neckline here, which was a little earlier. So looking at this, we kind of got an or this is kind of suggesting that we got an earlier indication. And, and again, we're just uh, I'm putting far too much stock in. Uh, uh, putting far too much stock in. Trading views method rather than kind of manually drawing it myself. Shout out to green tea, nectar of the gods. <laughs> but yeah, uh, on the daily time frame, Minx is bearish, Parallax is bearish, Wadatar explosion was obviously signaling for shorts here. Not so so profitable so far. You're actually just now back at break even. Um, but again, nice breakdown here. And if we take the measured move off this.
me just pull this up and we've got our price target of 1496. Uh, which is a, uh, about a 16% slide for Ethereum. So that's that's a that's a big sell-off. That's pretty much all the way back down to our previous level of support at our former consolidation zone. Um, what are logical trades here? Obviously, longing any bounces off the baseline. It, it makes a lot of sense. Um, right now, this doesn't seem incredibly bullish or positive. I don't really see the reason to take a lot of long trades. Uh, let's wait and see what price does down here uh, on the daily time frame. I wouldn't be taking any massive swings. Four hour time frame. Again, we've been below the we've been below the daily baseline uh, since Thursday of last week. So lots of opportunities for short trades. Let's see how the strategy performed. Uh, all right, so breakdown below the daily baseline and short signal simultaneously. Uh, so able to take advantage of this. Uh, now we reach oversold territory. You can either exit on these hammer candles because we are in oversold territory or wait for the cross here. Uh, either way, uh, entry here and exit here, 4% or 3.16%. Either way, all good. Uh, reversal baseline bounce. So we have price return to the baseline. We fade that movement, potential eight to 9% trade right there. Uh, here, another opportunity for reversal baseline bounce. Here, another opportunity for a reversal baseline bounce. All well and good. Uh, even yeah, maybe a, not very much profit here, but there was maybe 2.36%. We did get a short signal here if you were trading on momentum and uh, potentially adding. And then uh, yeah, there's the exit signal there. So that's uh, that's that's a losing trade if you entered there, but great wins if you entered on those reversal baseline bounces. Um, same thing, reversal baseline bounce with a bit of a fake out here. Uh, and let's say you entered and just lost on this trade. You have a beautiful opportunity here again, reversal baseline bounce, you just take price down, you fade that maneuver. And short signal here on this candle for a rundown of about 5%, beautiful. Uh, short signal here for a rundown of about 7%, beautiful. And reversal baseline bounce again. So four hour pathways to profit strategy, absolutely crushing it. Again, here we are, reversal baseline bounce and you just take that trade, all right? Um, down to the hourly uh, on Ethereum. Uh, let's just go back, I don't wanna go back this far, but again, you can see we're below the baseline, shorting opportunities here, reversal baseline bounce, chunk it down, reversal baseline bounce, chunk it down, uh, and multiple short signals throughout this entire decline right here for about a 6% movement. Uh, let's see here, candle breakout, that's candle size violation, so we don't take that trade, reversal baseline bounce, and uh, potential 1.35%, maybe a losing trade, maybe break even, not, not amazing. Uh, short signal here, potential 1.33%, uh, let's see here, uh, definitely losing trade right here, losing trade right there. Uh, short signal, uh, an immediate chunk down for about a 2% trade, reversal baseline bounce at a 1% maneuver. And do we get a long signal? We do get a long signal here. And is there sufficient run up? Uh, about 1%, really, really not that much. No short signal here. And here we go, beautiful long signal right here and a run up of about 2.94%. So really nice. And yeah, short signal right on this. That's candle size violation though. Uh, so, he, yeah, one, two, three, there we go. And 2.41%. So again, hourly has had a short on Ethereum. Hourly has had a short on Bitcoin. Uh, and a couple losing trades in there for Ethereum. But again, when you contrast that with all the wins on the four hour and the daily, not so bad. But again, losing trades are going to be part of your strategy. You're not going to have a 100% hit rate strategy. It's not going to happen. Okay. All right. Um, let's uh, let's go through the chart. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to everybody watching me live right now. Uh, shout outs to Jordan Stotts saying, have a good stream, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Have a uh, enjoy watching the stream. Uh, Peckham 08 says evening. It's uh, afternoon for me, brother, but I know you're watching from the UK. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and Samurai Ifis asks, is it possible for RNDR to hit an all time high? by June 5th, which is the Apple conference. Well, I, is it possible for RNDR to hit an all time high? I mean, well, theoretically, yes. Right? Let's take, let's, let's, let's look at the evidence here. RNDR. 
And for this, we're gonna we're really going to need to zoom out. Okay, so since RNDR is listing on Binance back in November of 2021 on the weekly time frame, obviously we lost almost all of our steam, 96% of our total value throughout 2022. Uh, and since June of 2022, we have been, well, we consolidated with two big kind of pre-pumps. Uh, and this is one way you can spot consolidation. When something bottoms out and then you see a couple pre-pumps, uh, usually a sign that the bigger movement's coming. So R&D are up 644.95% uh, since the beginning of this year. So the, the 2023 kind of bullish maneuver. Um, and certainly the weekly looks healthy, all right? You know, initial pump, pullback, uh, higher high. You know, we would be, you know, I'd like, I would have liked to see a little bit more steam out of this, like maybe something... Um, Well, you know, I guess that's not too bad, right? We did get a we did get a one to one movement. Uh, so, if we get another one to one movement, oh no, excuse me. Well, uh, let's assume that price is going to return. Okay, let's do it this way. Oops, no, not a pitchfork. Turn base fib extension. Let's say we run up here, and let's say we return to the six one eight. Uh, and we get another a current movement. Well, uh, just a one-to-one -one movement would be 1.3656. All right, so let's mark that out. 1.618 would be four. Okay, now we can delete these. Thank you very much. Uh, so can we hit an all-time high? I mean, well, a one another one-to-one -one movement, which is what we got here uh, from a retreat back, back to like 1.543. Uh, would be another 140% gain. And if we hit the second take profit, about a 218%, which would be pushing us very, very close uh, to near all-time high. Um, now, whether we will run up to the all-time high in anticipation kind of of the, of the conference, um, I'm not really sure. I'm not really I'm not really too hip on the R&DR news. So I'm assuming there's something with Apple going on. Uh, let's, uh, let's do some quick Googling. R&DR Apple. All right. It's Apple integration. So RNDR is being integrated. Uh, the native cryptocurrency of the render token network RNDR. Continue reading. Uh, RNDR is a project that is looking to offer decentralized GPU based graphic rendering solutions. Octane X, which is the app is available on Apple. Mac users can now pull off blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it, it, it's an indirect. Yeah, so all, I mean, all this, there's no. Okay, now my mouse is like stuck. But there's no like Apple is not like shilling RNDR. Uh, what it seems is happening is that the as it says here the rndr token is the brainchild of, of jules Erbach. he founder he's he founded otly it's a cloud rendering company and otly has a application that is available in the app store called octane x and it allows you to do real-time photorealistic 3d rendering uh, OctaneX provides users access to RNDR tokens decentral. Okay, so they do use, uh, there is there is an integration with OTOI and the RNDR GPU processing network. Uh, and it's it's just an indirect integration, right? It's like if, um, if, if Samsung obviously is Android powered, and if I, if I launched my own cryptocurrency token, and then I integrated that token into an app, and then it was available in the Play Store, uh, and then Samsung had that on their phone. Well, Samsung is not pumping my bags, right? Samsung doesn't care. So uh, I think this is obviously neat and probably one of the reasons why. And again, this is why following momentum is so important. But um, I don't really see I don't really see anything there. But at the same time, I'm not saying that that it's not going to happen. Obviously, RNDR is, is performing extremely well. I mean, RNDR is still up 16.3% on the week uh, and 46.8% on the month. So I mean, not complaining. 
not complaining. And I've, you know, I've been trading it very successfully. So, um, yay for RNDR. And sometimes really just stepping back and looking at the weekly chart can really help you, uh, determine what to do, uh, from a fundamental perspective here, guys, it can really, really help out. Okay. Uh, Robbie White, welcome to the stream. Uh, Rems, Rems GVA says, what is the winning rate of your strategy? So about 67% on the daily time frame. Uh, sometimes again, it's been as high as 75%. Um, this, this year has been pretty generous, but if I take the average over the last three years, uh, it's, it's about 67%. Um, and you know, I, uh, we've got a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of material and I mean, the majority of all of the educational content that we have in all of our courses on our website is all about statistical backtesting, processing your numbers, understanding what metrics are valuable and what you should be focusing on, what metrics to improve and what metrics to ignore. Um, yeah, no problem, man. Uh, on the four hour time frame. Uh, it's a little bit lower, about uh, 62%. Um, the, uh, but the realized average is probably closer to 57%, to be quite honest with you. Um, now, the profit factor on my four-hour strategy is actually better than the profit factor on my daily strategy, which, I mean, it's the same strategy, it's just different time frames, um, which, which is important, right? Because you can have... So what we're talking about is what TradingView calls percent profitability. And what most traders will colloquially call hit rate, right? Which is how often do you have a winning trade as opposed to having a losing trade? And so me saying like, oh, 67, 75%, like that sounds great. But what if my risk to reward ratio on the trades is like, you know, one to three, okay? Which means when I win, I win a dollar, but when I lose, I lose $3. So it doesn't matter that I have a 67 or 75% hit rate, I'm still losing money, right? Your risk to reward ratio is, I disagree with people who say it's more important. I, I know it's common knowledge among good traders to say like profit factor is more important. I don't. I think that it's psychologically important to have uh, preferably a high hit rate strategy because that allows you to continue trading it when you have a losing streak and you're always going to have a losing streak. You can have, you know, losing streaks of 10 or more losing trades in a row. Um, even if your strategy is 75%, it's all situational. It just depends on how many trades you take. And the law, the, the law, the law of large numbers is always going to come into a play. Uh, lower time frames. I'm actually, what I'm currently working on right now is I'm working on optimizing a five minute strategy, but I'll tell you this. Every strategy that I have executed on the lower time frames, like five minute, even down, I've, I've executed 30 second time frames, and I've even, of course, uh, tried my hand at developing like algorithmic automated strategies that execute on the microsecond level. And your your hit rate goes way down, you know. Like so, Flimp, uh, he's he's uh, one of our uh, contributors in the Discord. Great trader. Uh, it's been it's been fantastic to watch his journey. Uh, he's got a fantastically profitable strategy and he's got a very low hit rate and he trades on the five minute time frame. So his hit rate's like, like 37%, something like that. And he's, but he makes, I mean, he's making money hand over fist. So again, two, two sides of the same coin is percent profitability or how often your strategy wins, but, but just as important, although not as important, uh, is, is, is profit factor. So your risk to reward ratio. So how much you win when you win and how much you lose when you lose, both of those things have to be balanced. So you can have a high hit rate strategy. Typically, if you have a high hit rate strategy, like I, I'm kind of middle of the road, but if you have a high hit rate strategy, you'll typically have a lower uh, uh, percent profitability or not percent profit factor. What TradingView calls profit factor, what we call kind of R to R, what colloquially is called risk to reward ratio, meaning that you know, you'll know you win more often, but when you win, you win less. And when you lose, you lose a little bit more. Uh, so if you can just make it so that you win often enough, that's okay. Um, more commonly with trend following strategies like ours, the majority of trend following traders have low hit rate strategy, high profit factor strategies, right? So they, they don't win very often, but when they do win, it's a big win, right? So this is the kind of the classic turtle trading uh, methodology or philosophy. And uh, turtle trading is great. Like if you guys don't have a strategy right now, I mean, obviously I recommend just going and using kind of our plug and play indicators, but um, turtle trading is, is, is fantastic, right? It's, it's worked. Uh, you just buy, you just, you just buy uh, breakouts of, uh, you know, it depends. There's different versions of the turtle, turtle trading, but you just buy breakouts, right? You just buy breakouts and run a trailing stop. That's it. That's basically turtle trading. 
and you position size appropriately and it's like two percent risk per trade which is exactly what i use um okay uh, i will do a chart request if um uh if there are any requests for charts i will do one cryptocurrency chart request and i will do one traditional chart request or a forex chart request all right um so let me know in the chat guys get your requests in uh, and while we do that we're going to do a quick uh quick ad break all right uh okay uh so if you guys are enjoying the content of course uh we really appreciate that um, if you want to improve your trading skills, we've really dedicated our lives to helping other people find the same sense of financial freedom in the cryptocurrency markets that we have. Uh, and we we just really like doing that, right? We've got an amazing community. I love talking with the guys. I love trading with the guys. And that, you know, I didn't really think it would be, but it's ended up being a very fulfilling part of my life is helping other people develop their own strategies. Uh, if you guys want to join us, if you guys feel that there's elements of your strategy that aren't working, if you don't even have a strategy, if you don't even really know where to start, we've got an amazing community, awesome resources. Uh, a subscription to our private group does come with uh, our signals and analysis. We try to give you a heads up on the markets, tell you exactly what's going on and what our recommendations are for the markets. In addition to that, you're going to get access to all of our courses. Uh, the courses teach you everything from risk management to building your own strategy from the ground up, how to understand statistics, how to understand the metrics, how to understand how to create it in PineScript, uh, how to do it manually, all of the things, uh, and then how to improve, select your markets and continuously move forward and grow. Uh, and we continue to publish content all of the time. You get access to our private discord. You'll also get access to our entire indicator bundle. So all of the indicators that you're seeing, uh, you're seeing me use and others that you're not seeing me use, you get access to all of those as well as our automated strategies like bottom feeder, which is up 174% since November. So uh, there's a link down in the description. It's the first link in the description, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com to join our community. That's all I'm going to say about that. It is an invaluable, uh, yeah, it's invaluable when becoming a trader to have a community that helps foster growth. So that's premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. All right, we're going to do our market wrap up now. If we don't have a chart request, uh, oh, I do see a chart request. I think, I do believe that is a chart. Let's check it out. Um, what do you think about coin? Is coin rule a chart? Is coin rule a, a, a coin? I am gonna, I'm gonna believe you, man. Coin flex? Is coin rule a platform? Coin rule is a platform, isn't it? Ah, it's a trading bot. Well, I don't know anything about it. Automated crypto trading bots made easy. Coin rule empowers cryptocurrency traders to compete with professional algorithm traders and hedge funds. No coding required. Uh, I doubt it. You know, like, listen, guys, um, you know, I've used, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, I don't want to say anything negative about these guys, but I'm just going to be honest, right? Like if, if, if it was just as easy as signing up to one of these platforms and making money, then every, everybody would do it, right? Like there would be, like everybody would do it. You know, professional traders would do this and professional traders don't use these platforms. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of like three commas bot trading, but all their plug and play basic stuff, like like it'll, it might work for a little bit, right? But it doesn't work long-term. So, and, and I have automated strategies. Most of my strategies are, are, are mostly automated and, and the majority of them are semi-automated. So they're kind of like cyborgs, like the computer does most of the work, but I have to actually push the buttons when the moment arises. Um, and, I, and I have many, many, many friends who are just purely algorithmic traders. But here, here's the thing. It's, it's not, it's just not, it's, it's, a, it's a commitment, right? Like you've got you've to gotta continually, it, you know, they're like no coding required, right? But a hell of a lot of math, because you got to go over all the statistics, you got to review. Again, it, like trading is, an, is a numbers game. It's a math game. You got to go over, you know, what strategies are working. You've got to continually kind of, kind of innovate or make changes until you get the results that you want. And then you've constantly got to be able to modify your strategy because if you try to make an, like a, a general strategy that performs well all the time, um, you need to have very clear conditions on which direction you're going to trade and how you're managing your risk. And typically a lot of these, a lot of these strategies don't do that. A lot of these, I think get a lot of people wrecked and, you know, again, They're not bad, right? But I think they just lead people down the wrong route. And I mean, we, we've taught people how, who knew absolutely nothing how to just build their own strategy in TradingView and, and they're up and running in less than a month and making money. So 
I mean, kudos to them. I, I see these all the time, right? You know, like we got three commas, uh, you know, trailing crypto, uh, crypto hopper, um, gunbot, coin rule. All of these things are, are really good and they, they can help add a level of efficiency to your trading. But I think if you go down the route of thinking that these things are just going to solve the problems for you and that you don't need to make the strategy first, I think you're wrong. It'll lead you down the wrong path. And you'll end up losing money and, and getting washed out. Make the strategy first and then look for what level of automation you can use to improve your strategy and reduce your workload. But you got to know what you're doing first. Um, you know, like these these automated like buy buy buys like I, I don't think so. But uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to check. Uh, I'm going to check coin roll out. I think I have a things to check out. Yeah, to research. Boom. All right. I'm going to check this out, bud. So that's my that's my initial thought on uh, on coin roll. Uh Kennedy was right. GBP. All right, we got the British pound to the yen. My favorite. Yes. All right. Actually, pound yen is a little tricky, you know what I'm saying? Uh <laughs> typically. Um uh I want I want the Alanda feed, of course. Uh, daily time for okay, so great, great run from the pound yen. Like, holy Jesus! All right, let's just look at um, let's do a pathways to profit on here, and make sure that we're on the twenty one and all as well. Uh, yeah, pretty. Oh wait, what's going on here? There we go. I mean, this is a pretty clear cut chart uh, as far as BTP is concerned, right? Like, let's just zoom this up a little bit. Uh, we have price consolidating for a little bit, but just the most recent obvious trade is we we break above. Let's get rid of the EMA. Sorry, that's a little confusing. And I know that's confusing as well. Uh, now I want to save that. Uh, we have price consolidating and then a powerful break above the baseline uh, that occurs with minx crossing above the zero line, which occurs on this candle. On that very same candle, we see parallax above the zero line. We also see Wadatar explosion showcasing positive delta and a rising explosion line. So we enter on that candle. And uh, let's just do the, uh, this is the easiest way to do this. All right. So once we get a once we get a confirmed signal, right? We've got a rising explosion level. We even got the little arrow there telling us to enter. Everything's all good. We want to enter here. Uh, we're going to bust out Quadrigo, and this is going to tell us where to put our stop loss and where to take our, our uh, take profit. So we're going to take a long position, and we're going to be targeting TP3, uh, taking half profits at TP1 if desired. And this is what I do. And now we'll turn Quadrigo off, and we'll just simply move forward into the future. Oh shoot, there we go. Uh, well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do, but uh, we'll just turn that off. And we can see, yeah, beautiful trade, a little bit of a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of drawdown from our entry, but you know, going all the way to TP3, no problem. That's a two to one risk. That's a two to one risk to reward ratio, two point oh two actually. Uh, although it, it's two, I just it's just my hand, you know, like like drawing. So um, let's see here. Uh, price briefly poked its head above the overbought area right here, uh, which is our kind of warning to look out for the market. We do, of course, have. Uh, our, our reversal system right here. So again, same thing. Uh, we've got Minx and yeah, right in right in the same area. We're getting all the warning signs here from our indicators. Yep. And yeah, and then not, and not so much. Yeah. So nice. Nice two drives to the to the downside. Bottom feeder signal telling you to buy the dip on this candle. Really nice signal from bottom feeder there. Nice three percent movement. Uh, oh, about three hundred twenty pips. Three hundred forty. Yeah, about three hundred twenty, three hundred fifty pips. And. I don't really like where price is at right now like obviously i'm biased to trade at the long side but we also have a, a very large gap here between the baseline so we're very overextended and now again trends we want to trade with the momentum same thing like that's not the thing but um i also don't like this i also don't like the fact that we've got regular bearish divergence like price you can see here is making a slightly higher high but the oscillator is making a lower high um not a huge fan of that momentum really petering out and dying 
and just kind of a just grinding resistance. That's it. Now, typically, again, I'm going to say like I'm neutral in this one. I wouldn't want to jump into this. I would be buying breakouts. But again, it is kind of my idea that when we when we approach resistance and grind, we typically break through. Um, when we approach support and grind, we typically break down. So um, I don't like the regular bearish divergence. I do like the fact that we're grinding resistance though, but I also do not like the fact that there's a there's a large gap. So I wouldn't take any action here. I'm not a reversal trader. I wouldn't be looking to take this down. Uh, we already made our money on the longs. Uh, I would be watching for a breakout above our current range high. What's our current range high? 172.799. So what? Like about 580 pips up. what i'd be looking for on gbp jpy gbp jpy um yeah yep that's all i'd be looking for breakout otherwise pull back and i'd be waiting for a continuation signal which which we actually got one here so you could theoretically be in a long and be, be positioned for the breakout and again you could just be wrong but yeah bottom feeder telling you to buy this dip was nice yeah, I like that. That's what I got, my man. Uh oh, yo yo, Cryptonomics, good to see you, my friend. Uh he asks, how uh how many take profits do you typically have in one trade? Two. Two is how I typically do it. So I take 50% of my profits off at TP1. And then I let the trade ride until I get an exit signal uh, or until I use some discretion to exit the trade. It wasn't always that way. It was all like pure, purely automated back in the day. Um, but I have found that over the years, I am able to squeeze more profits out of my trade by managing the last half of, with, a, with a bit of discretion. If I get an exit signal for my exit indicator, which right now is the same as my initiator, which is Minx, uh, then I'll just exit the trade completely. Uh, so that part is, you could say, automated because there's a signal for it. Um, but again, you'll, you'll hear me talk about like, oh, you know, price is oversold and there's a hammer candle. I'll, I'll, I'll get out of the trade. Like that's, it's two things that I know work really well. Price is oversold, likely to pull back and a hammer candle is a reversal candle. I'm out. Uh, or a very long wick and high volume is typically indicative, uh, of an exit signal, but yeah, enter the trade half off at TP one, move the stop loss to break even, and then let the other half ride. And that's how we get big, big wins, right? Especially if we, we really let it ride. That's same thing on the weekly time frame, right? Although I do most of my I do most of my value investing on the weekly time frame. Uh, Robbie White asks, "How do I get news and filter it?" Uh, you know, listen, that's it's difficult, right? Um, you know, I, I I get you know a bunch of newsletters in my inbox every day, uh, and I have filters set up so they just kind of go into a folder and they don't clutter up my main inbox. And you know, once in a while I will read them. There's a few that I really like, um, and you know. I used to be subscribed to way, way more, but just over time, I've started kind of whittling those down. And so I certainly get some good information and good alpha um, from there. Um, but more more lately, um, it's just kind of being active in, in the markets, having conversations with people, talking to everybody in the group every day who bring me information and we kind of discuss it. We, you know, we do the round table thing every morning. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of Twitter spaces. Uh, that's the first place. That's where you can get information first is, is Twitter spaces or, or Twitter in general. Um, Twitter can be a cesspool cause you want to avoid the, you know, the advertisements, the marketing, the scams. Uh, but if you hop in those Twitter spaces, right, if you curate a good Twitter list of good content creators on, on Twitter, uh, DeFi traders, cryptocurrency traders, market movers, um, those Twitter spaces are, are, are money. There's some really good alpha in them. So, you know, uh, watching the shows, uh, is good. Um, you kind of want to avoid the shows that are trying to give you the information after the fact. There's, you know, a lot, lots of hype and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it, listen, it's a challenge, man. And I'm certainly not an expert at it, but I do my best to, you know, cryptonomics has got a great point. News should not be a part of your strategy. And I agree with that. News never plays a part in how I enter or exit a trade. Uh, you know, I've, I've tried my hand at that. It's, it's, it's statistically, it ends up badly for me. So... It's definitely a challenge, but you want to, you want good, high quality information. And typically I'll, I'll just hear something that interests me and then I'll go personally research that. I don't watch mainstream news. Um, uh, you know, try to find some, some newsletters that are, that are helpful. Uh, I recommend subscribing to our newsletter. We put on a newsletter semi-frequently, right? 
Uh, we post most of our stuff on Twitter and on Discord, but we, uh, we do do a newsletter every once in a while, uh, which is good. It's great. Uh, hey, Roranor, welcome to the stream. Roranor asks, uh, what are some future trends to watch for in DeFi? Do you see growth over the next quarter? Uh, do I see growth over the next quarter? Um, I mean, I definitely, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say the next quarter because I think that we might, based on on-chain data, be getting a bit of a pullback. Uh, but I think that that will be a higher low pullback for Bitcoin and ultimately a buying opportunity for a lot of good crypto assets. So I'm very bullish in, in the long run for, for this year and, and upcoming years. Um, what are the trends I see emerging in DeFi? Well, ever since the Shanghai upgrade, I certainly think that the new narratives are going to be plays on liquid staking derivatives or LSDs. So I would certainly be looking for protocols or platforms that allow you to stake or farm on their platform that that provide that ecosystem somehow. That's that's the that's the way. You know, my personal you know I trade DeFi, um, but I don't really do the whole GMX leverage trading on, on DeFi thing. Um, I I do a lot of whale watch uh, whale wallet watching uh, when it comes to DeFi. I just look for you know what what coins are profitable traders that have curated lists of doing what tokens are they buying and then I, I tend to follow the leader and I follow them along and when they sell I sell and you know it's that's it, an effective strategy it, it takes an inordinate amount of time I've got a pretty large network that helps me out with that I try to provide that information to the group uh, as well and and that's been successful for me as far as you know so I'm not really following the the narratives or protocols myself Although that can certainly help, like being aware of what's going to pop. So LSDs, yeah, I think LSDs is certainly going to be uh, the next the next big innovation sector for DeFi uh, is the ability to, for example, like have your currency staked or locked up somewhere, but be able to use the derivative elsewhere. This is why Synthetics has flipped GMX for trading volume and fees um, for, for multiple reasons. One, obviously, Synthetics lowered their fees. But uh, Synthetix is also more secure and more censorship resistant because uh, they, they, have a, they have a more decentralized validation system and Oracle system. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I'd be watching for. And, you know, I know that's a little bit of amorphous advice. I don't really have big, huge picks to give you, except for, of course, my portfolio, which I share. But, yeah, looking for things that are trying to benefit or innovate on the liquid staking derivatives aspect of DeFi, like synthetics, for example. And then obviously a, a huge thing I think is, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, I don't want to get the word wrong. Um, decomposition, like the ability to the ability for for inner blockchain communication, right? So Stargate Finance and and um, uh, Layer Zero Labs is obviously really the innovator for this. Uh, the ZRO token, I think, is is going to do well, and zk Sync and all these kind of zero knowledge zero knowledge proofs is another obviously big trend in an attempt to get more secure. You know, anything that's better than the optimistic rollups, I think, is good because I, I think that optimistic rollups are are not great, but you know they're okay. Arbitrum and optimism. Uh, I think ZK Sync and and the ZK Snark methodology is a better way to go. It's more secure. So I would definitely be looking for opportunities on those blockchains and in those ecosystems as well. And then, yeah, uh, inter inter cross chain, you know, interoperability across cross chain or decomposition across blockchains. So the ability to have your funds on Ethereum, for example, but use those funds to transact directly with a protocol on let's say polygon that's which is exactly what layer zero labs and zero are working on layer zero labs is the um underlying technology that powers stargate finance and their their bridge and all the other and just about every other bridge now is powered by layer zero labs technology so um they they obviously have a token uh it's not out yet um Nobody, you know, I, I, by the way, I, I've got a guide on our website, uh, on our blog. Just go to our website, crackingcryptocurrency.com. Check our blog section. I've got a whole guide on how you can qualify for the zero airdrop. You can also go to Twitter and search for my thread on Twitter. But Oh, wow. I just realized I am five minutes past uh, the mentoring session. So sorry, guys. I've got to go. I've got people waiting in the private group to do the mentoring session. So I want to thank you guys very, 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 very much. 
Uh, we don't have time for the news today. We don't have time for the calendar. So we're just going to jump to the chatting uh, and uh, do our plug zone here real quick. Uh, make sure you guys join the Discord. Uh, that's where we can discuss the markets, exchange charts and setups and see us, the team and our environment. So make sure to join us in the Discord, discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. And uh, make sure the so question of the day, guys, question of the day. We talked about Hong Kong opening up the floodgates. Do you think this is going to lead to or be a catalyst for the upcoming bull run in cryptocurrency? Or do you think this is just kind of buy the rumor, sell the news? Leave your thoughts down in the comments section down below. And uh, we will shout out comments as they come in. And uh, once a month, we do pick out a random YouTube commenter and give them a free month subscription to the premium trading group. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, make sure to check the website out. Links to everything you could possibly need down in the description below. And for the outro, risk management and discipline are always responsible for paying the bills. Always take the time as well to appreciate the finer things in life and trade safely. As always, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you.